Good evening and welcome to evening prayer for Wednesday, June 3rd. I apologize for missing morning prayer this morning. And real quick note, uh, Friday evening we will not have uh, evening prayer. I've got an evening appointment. Let's go ahead and begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. The New Testament reading tonight is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, a continuation of the Passion account, uh, beginning with the betrayal and arrest of Jesus and his trial uh, before the Sanhedrin. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those who were around him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said no more of this, and he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple and elders who had come out against him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. They seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him as they beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they did many other things against him, blaspheming him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council. And they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. 
But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, You say that I am. And they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Our Book of Concord reading tonight is from the Large Catechism, Article 3, the third petition of the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So far we have prayed that God's name be honored by us and that his kingdom triumph among us. In these two points is summed up all that deals with God's honor and our salvation. We receive God as our own and all his riches, but now arises a need that is just as great. We must firmly keep God's honor and our salvation and not allow ourselves to be torn from them. In a good government, it is not only necessary that there be those who build and govern well, it is also necessary to have those who defend, offer protection, and maintain it firmly. So in God's kingdom, although we have prayed for the greatest need, for the gospel, faith, and the Holy Spirit, that he may govern us and redeem us from the devil's power, we must also pray that God's will be done. For there will be strange events if we are to abide in God's will. We shall have to suffer many thrusts and blows on that account from everything that seeks to oppose and prevent the fulfillment of the first two petitions. No one can believe how the devil opposes and resists these prayers. He cannot allow anyone to teach or to believe rightly. It hurts him beyond measure to have his lies and abominations exposed, which have been honored under the most fancy sham uses of the divine name. It hurts him when he himself is disgraced, is driven out of the heart, and has to let a breach be made in his kingdom. Therefore he chafes and rages as a fierce enemy with all his power and might. He marshals all his subjects and, in addition, enlists the world and our own flesh as his allies. For our flesh is in itself lazy and inclined to evil, even though we have accepted and believed God's word. The world, however, is perverse and wicked, so he provokes the world against us, fans and stirs the fire so that he may hinder and drive us back, cause us to fall and again bring us under his power. Such is all his will, mind, and thought. He strives for this day and night and never rests a moment. He uses all arts, wiles, ways, and means that he can invent. If we would be Christians, therefore, we must surely expect and count on having the devil with all his angels in the world as our enemies. They will bring every possible misfortune and grief upon us. For where God's word is preached, accepted, or believed, and produces fruit, there the Holy Cross cannot be missing. And let no one think that he shall have peace. He must risk whatever he has upon earth, possessions, honor, house, and estate, wife and children, body and life. Now this hurts our flesh and the old Adam. The test, to be steadfast and to suffer with patience, in whatever way we are assaulted, and to let go whatever is taken from us. So there is just as great a need as in all the other petitions, that we pray without ceasing, Dear Father, your will be done, not the devil's will or our enemies or anything that would persecute and suppress your holy word or hinder your kingdom. Grant that we may bear with patience and overcome whatever is to be endured because of your word and kingdom, so that our poor flesh may not yield or fall away because of weakness or sluggishness. Look, we have in these three petitions, in the simplest way, the needs that relate to God himself, yet they are for all our sakes. Whatever we pray concerns us alone. As we have said before, we pray that what must be done without us anyway may be also done in us. As his name must be hallowed and his kingdom come, whether we pray or not, so also his will must be done and succeed. This is true even though the devil, with all his followers, raise a great riot, are angry and rage against it, and try to exterminate the gospel completely. But for our own sakes, we must pray that, even against their fury, his will be done without hindrance among us also. We pray so that they may not be able, able to accomplish anything and that we may remain firm against all violence and persecution and submit to God's will. Such prayer then is to be our protection and defense now. It is to repel and put down all that the devil, pope, bishops, tyrants, and heretics can do against our gospel. 
Let them all rage and attempt their utmost and deliberate and deliberate and resolve how they may suppress and exterminate us, so that their will and counsel may prevail. Over and against this, one or two Christians with this petition alone shall be our wall, against which they shall run and dash themselves to pieces. We have this comfort and confidence. The devil's will and purpose in all our enemies shall and must fail and come to nothing, no matter how proud, secure, and powerful they know themselves to be. For if their will were not broken and hindered, God's kingdom could not remain on earth, nor his name be hallowed. And now we confess the Apostles' Creed and pray the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Christ, once again we come before you, affected by what we've seen, read, heard, and experienced. O Christ, we come before you because of the losses and suffering we have experienced these last few months. O Christ, we come before you because of the loss of life, the violence, and the shootings that have afflicted our homes, communities, and nation. O Christ, these are trying and exhausting times. O Christ, there is a spirit of frustration, exhaustion, anger, and despair many feel and experience. O Christ, this is not what you desire for us or creation. O Christ, receive our cry of lament. O Christ, do not reject or forsake us in these days. O Christ, let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. O crucified one, you see and know the pain and suffering that afflicts that sin inflicts on us all. O crucified one, you took on human flesh and have given voice to lament, crying out, My God, my God. O crucified and risen one, receive our cries of lament. O crucified and risen one, help and renew us so we can praise you. Hear our prayer, O Lord, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer, Christ in your mercy. Hear our prayer, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer, amen. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare all the dying. From all sin, from all evil, from the devil's might, from the devil's wiles, from your wrath and from hell's torment, from sudden and evil death, good Lord, deliver them. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help them, good Lord. In the hour of death, on the day of judgment, help them, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord. To comfort all the dying, to forgive them all their sins, to lead them out of this misery into eternal life, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, 
we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.